1998, the Senate Commerce Committee report on the Internet Tax Freedom Act discussed the goal of this temporary legislation by stating that, quote, most state and local commercial tax codes were enacted prior to the development of the Internet and electronic commerce. Efforts to impose these codes without any adjustment to Internet communications, transactions, or services will lead to state and local taxes that are imposed in unpredictable and overly burdensome ways. A temporary moratorium on Internet-specific taxes is necessary to facilitate the development of a fair and uniform taxing scheme." Unquote. But unfortunately, since the Internet Tax Freedom Act first passed, Congress has made little progress in developing a coherent policy that addresses the intersection of state taxation and the Internet. Aside from extending um, this tax moratorium three times since it first passed, um, Congress has yet to pass legislation like the Marketplace Fairness Act or similar legislation that would allow states to treat e-commerce sales similarly to sales from br brick and mortar stores. Instead, we've seen states attempting to set a patchwork of policies that simply doesn't work. A federal solution is needed from Congress. In the meantime, adoption of the Internet has exploded since the Internet Tax Freedom Act first passed in 1998, and today 75% of American households subscribe to Internet access services, and hundreds of billions of dollars of commerce is done over the Internet annually. Given the importance of the Internet to consumers and to economic growth, it is Congress's and this committee's responsibility to determine a federal approach to e-fairness, and I'm disappointed that we're simply looking at this bill in isolation without regard to the other issues related to the Internet and to taxation. I agree with supporters of this legislation who are concerned about taxing Internet access, but also we should not be allowing the Internet to serve as a sales tax loophole. The issue of e-fairness is a related issue that this committee must commit to tackling. And while I support extending the current tax moratorium that is set to expire later this year, I don't think we should permanently extend this policy without also providing a federal solution on the online sales tax issue. This is a critical jobs issue that I continue to hear about from small businesses throughout my district. And it is the role of Congress to ensure that our nation's tax policies and regulation don't unfairly burden one business model over the other. Yet brick and mortar businesses can't fairly compete right now because states do not have the ability to effectively um, and efficiently collect the taxes owed from online purchases. Only Congress can fix this, and I believe we must continue to move forward on legislation like the Marketplace Fairness Act. I appreciate Representative Chaffetz's work to assist small businesses with this important issue, and I hope that the leadership and my fellow members of this committee do not consider our work on Internet tax policy complete after today's markup, and I look forward to continuing to work with members on both sides of the aisle to work to find a solution to move forward on both the Internet Tax Freedom Act and online sales tax legislation before the end of this year, and I yield back the rest of my time. Question occurs on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Michigan. All those in favor respond by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. No. Being the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. A, a record vote is required. A recorded vote is requested. In the